afternoon everybody or morning or evening depends what time you're watching it it's bushcraft dave welcome to episode four um of me big walks and big cooks i've got an absolute corker today in terms of a meal that i'm gonna make i am really looking forward to this so stay tuned so you can see what the heck i'm gonna cook up today it's gonna be simple but oh my goodness i cannot wait I've been thinking about this all day. Uh, so today I've gone on a big old hike. This is going to be about 14 kilometers. I was hoping that I could make it to a, a local wood near us called Burnt Wood, which is, sounds like a crazy name for a wood, but it looks quite big. But when I was looking at some of the maps and the roads and paths to it, they're not necessarily accessible. So I think it must be a private bit of woodland. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go to that. I'm going to get close so I can at least see what's going on around there. But the plan is there's a couple of other little bits of woods and stuff nearby. I'm going to find somewhere to go and set up the trangier again and make this top, top dish. So, hope you're having an awesome day. Enjoy looking at the bits of this walk and stay tuned for this meal because it's going to be a cracker. Okay, well, uh, that's the wood I would like to go to, but I think it might be a private woodland. When I get closer, I'll find out. So if I can't get in there, I'm just going to keep traveling further past a farm. And just to say on the horizon around there-ish, um, there's another piece of woodland where hopefully I can set up and cook some food. Okay, I'm about halfway through now. I think I just checked it was about 4.2 miles. Got about another 4.2 to go. Light's already starting to go a little bit. Um, I've been walking for about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half, so I've got about the same to go. But I'm getting a bit peckish now, so I'm gonna try and, I'm coming up to this wood that I think I should be able to just stop at and make my food. So hopefully coming up next is my meal. Okay, so still not cooking yet. Um, the woods that I did intend on going to cook in was just really open. It wasn't wasn't quite what I want in terms of finding somewhere nice and quiet and out of the way. So I just kept walking. I've ended up probably doing about I don't know, probably an extra mile or mile and a half or something like that. And I'm back in Treaton Woods. Uh, this is, I was going to come through this anyway on my way back. Um, now I'm in here, I'll find a nice quiet spot out of the way, just off the path. Set my trangier up, nice quick one. See you in it. So here I am, just set up a spot to put my trangier and I'm going to now start making this fantastic, fantastic American style bacon cheeseburger. You're going to absolutely love this. Okay, so I've got a fantastic um, beef and ale burger that I'm just gonna fry off 
for about, I don't know, five or six minutes on each side. It says about eight on each side on the packaging, but I feel like the heat's gonna be a bit more direct here. We'll see how it goes. If it's not getting like burnt too much, then we should be all good. I've then got a nice piece of bacon I'm gonna fry off. I've got some Monterey Jack cheese, which will go on top. And I've also got a really nifty idea that I wanna try. It's gonna hopefully see if I can toast the brioche bun as well, but we'll see it all getting put together. Okay, so while that's all sizzling away, I thought I'd just take the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about myself, really, and why I do uh, all the hiking and cooking and stuff like that. Um, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I'm not an expert hiker. I'm not an ex expert backpacker. I'm not an expert bushcrafter. I'm not an expert cook. Um, but I enjoy all of them. Um, I think I would probably class myself as that uh, good at everything, brilliant, uh, but not brilliant at anything, you know. Um, but yeah, ultimately I love getting out and about, it's good for exercise, but it's also really good for my mental health as well. Um, I've always struggled a little bit with it, as I'm sure a lot of people have. Um, it's been more difficult, I guess, over the last few years, you know. The world's changed quite a lot. The stresses and pressures and stuff that are put on you from, I don't know, society or work or whatever it might be. Um, it's become tough and lockdown definitely has sort of heightened all of that. So the ability to now get back out and cooking while I'm out and seeing the positive comments that's coming from everybody, it's really motivating me. Um, it's really making me want to do more, which is fantastic. So thank you to everybody who's whether it be just a kind word as they pass me, whether it be comments in the chat, um, I really, really do appreciate it. And it, it is spurring me on to keep out, keep active and try new things. But one of the things that I want to do in the next few weeks, which I hope you'll be able to enjoy, is I've got a, a walking book that I've had for a, a long, long time. I'll show you it in one of my future videos where it's got a whole host of different walks in the Peak District. and. My plan is to try and work through every single one of them, um, make it into a, a playlist and work through every single one of the walks on there. Um, so the first one that I plan to do, I guess in the next two or three weeks, is at a place called Dovedale and I'm going to post a video of that. I'll do a big hike around there, I think it's about seven miles or something. I'll be more detail in that video. But obviously I'll still plan to, be, while I'm out there, cook. Um, I'm even thinking about maybe camping overnight while I'm there as well, but we'll see how that goes. But yeah, really loving the response from people. Um, it's really challenging my mind about where my next walks are gonna take me. Um, it's really challenging me about what food I can do. I love cooking, um, but the opportunity to cook out is not as easy, you know, it's not, not as straightforward. So it, you've really motivated me to do more stuff. So I really do appreciate that. and. Uh, yeah, it's really, really good for my mental health and well-being. I'm physically the fittest I've ever been. And the meal that I'm having today, the burger, it's a bit of a celebration, really. I've been I've been dieting now for 12 weeks. Um, tomorrow, which is when this video should hopefully upload, um, I'll have done the diet, this diet for 12 weeks. I've lost about 36 pounds, something like that. Maybe it's 38, I'm not sure. I've lost a lot. Um, I feel absolutely massively better for it. But it's been mainly vegetarian and pescatarian, um, mainly vegetarian. And as, as a result, I'd like this is the first meat that really I'm gonna have had for 12 weeks. I am 
uber excited. Um, I'm certainly excited to show you what it looks like. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so things are coming along nicely now. It's probably been, it's, the burger and the bacon um, have probably been cooking now for about 14 minutes. I deliberately wanted to make the bacon go that sort of real, sort of gnarly, uh, smoky color. I want it to be that sort of crispy bacon style. Um, I appreciate, and I've had some subscribers from Canada and America, so um, I'm sure this is not the kind of bacon that you guys would have in your burgers and stuff um, over there, but it's a piece of back bacon, which is what we traditionally have in our bacon sandwiches and things over here. So that's perfect. That's exactly as I want it. So that can go on my plate, ready to be built into the burger shortly. And I'm not too worried about the sort of blackening on the pan. And um, it's just where the bits of juices and stuff have started to meld on. It will all clean off. It will all clean off. I'll even probably put some water in here at the end just to, once I've sort of let everything cool down and sorted out the fat and stuff like that, I'll be able to clean that off no problem. So here's my first idea, okay? And just a normal burger, normal bit of bacon. I've got a burger bun, but I have seen, um, like on videos and things that I've seen in restaurants where they put the cheese on top of the burger and then they cover it in, a, I, I think the word is a cloche. I could be completely wrong, but it allows the burger to sort of steam and the cheese to cook in there. So that's the next thing that I'm gonna do. Okay, so in foil, I just brought with me a piece of Monterey Jack cheese, which I'll just pop over the top. And then the idea that I've had for a cloche is to use uh, one of the pans one of the, just the small saucepans from the Trangia set. Just stick it over the top. And hopefully this will work a bit like a cloche. Okay, and here's idea number two. So I'm gonna just let that burger sit to one side um, in the pan. It'll allow it to just sort of keep its heat and let that cheese melt just a little bit more. In fact, I'll put the bacon underneath there as well so it all keeps warm. But my idea is I wanted to toast the brioche buns. Now the only problem is I brought some tent pegs, which I was gonna just lay across the trangia, so it would sit, just sit on top of the trangia and then I could put the burger buns on top and hopefully the heat would just kind of toast it. But I have a feeling that these might be a bit too short. So if they are too short, I'm gonna have to come up with another idea. I think I'll just find some sticks lying around on the forest floor or on the wood, it's not a forest, on the wood floor and yeah, see if I can use them as some sort of, just like a, a little, bridge that I can put the burger buns over just to get them a little, little bit of heat as well. Yeah, it's perfect. That sort of real melty cheese. Good. Okay, put, cool. So it works. So I've got a uh, just a really nice brioche bun and I'll just quickly see if this works in toasting. Oh, certainly giving it a bit of a toasting. <laughs> it's not perfect. In fact, I don't want to go too crazy. So it's giving it a bit of a toasting. Okay. Actually my flame looks like it's just about to go out. So it looks like I've timed it pretty well. And then I'll show you the last phases of putting it together. Okay, it's just giving it a light toasting. It's better than nothing. Okay, so time to plate it up. I've brought a few things with me to make this as special as I possibly can. So the first thing I've brought with me is I've brought just a little tub. I've got about a, a teaspoon of chili jam. I absolutely adore chili jam. If I can, I will put it on absolutely everything. And now, just taking the cloche off. Hopefully the burgers stayed relatively warm. I know in the instructions it did say to let it rest, 
for five minutes anyway, but oh man, this is going to be amazing. I'll try and get all that amazing, try and get all that amazing cheese off. Don't really want to eat that leaf. I've got some mayo to, mayo to put on the other bun. I think this is pretty conventional for a burger. That's probably way too much actually. Just a bit of a bit of a dollop of mayo on the top bun. And here's the bit I'm most excited about. And I've kind of already cheated because I've tasted this already, so I know it's good. So um, I've seen a few videos where people put like fried onions and things like that on top. Um, but I'm a massive fan of like the crispy onions that you can get. They're already pre-cooked, pre-crispy. And, and I tried to buy some from the shops and I couldn't find any anywhere. So I decided I would try and make some. So in this little pot, I've got some crispy onions I made myself. Um, you should now see a short video of me showing you me making these at, at home this morning. Cool, so that's how I made those fried onions. Um, I'll hopefully we'll have stuck some bits up in text or I'll, I'll put something in the description as to how I made it but ultimately that gives me some crispy onions that I can just put on the top I don't care that they're spilled on the side I'm gonna eat the whole thing anyway so ready to try this burger I've done a big walk I've still got some more to go, so this is going to fuel me for the last two and a half miles, maybe. Um, the light's going. I will be finishing this walk in the dark, but I can't wait to get my mouth around this. Hmm. Okay, so. The sweetness of the brioche bun. The the sweet kick of the chili. You get the crispiness from the bacon and the, the crispy onions. And then as you eat into it, there's that, that sort of cool smoothness kicks through as the mayo melts into it all. But the burger, you can absolutely taste the ale that's been put into that. Not much, it's just there in the background. But I tell you what it makes me want, a pint of beer. I feel like after this walk, I might treat myself. See you shortly. Right, well that's me leaving Treaton Woods behind me. I finished my burger. I, I'm not kidding. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I will definitely be doing that again. I mean, I will happily do it again on a hike. I'll do it again at home. The homemade crispy onions were super easy. Um, the ingredients themselves are, are pretty easy to get hold of and to just chop up an onion is not a big thing. So um, I'm sure it could easily be cheaper to just buy some crispy onions, but quite satisfying that pretty much everything in there I made myself, um, ish. <laughs> I'm sure I could have made the burger myself as well, but in time, in time. So that's another episode from Bushcraft Dave, episode four, signing off. Join me in the next one. If you like the video, please like, subscribe. You know the drill. And we'll see you in the next one.